Now, Jesus came to the earth and he spent just a short time. When he was crucified, of course, he went back to heaven and so Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Now, when Jesus was on the earth, he said, if you want, in Matthew 28, 18, all power in heaven and earth is given unto him. All, all authority in heaven and earth is given unto him. So everything to do with heaven and earth is Jesus' responsibility. Now remember I taught you that God's Spirit is made up of three parts. The Holy Spirit has different functions. The Holy Spirit draws people to God. The Holy Spirit teaches people. The Holy Spirit gives revelation knowledge to people. You know, when you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit helps you to understand what you're reading. So the Holy Spirit has functions. Jesus is responsible for everything in heaven and earth. And what does the Father do? Well, the Father is the overall head. Remember, the universe is massive. You know, some people say that the universe is made up of some 200 to 500 billion galaxies. Now, that's a lot. If you, how many heavenly bodies there, you know, unimaginable amount. Now, who holds them together? Why don't they clash? You know, God holds them together, the Father. So that's how the God's is organized in three parts, right? Now, when Jesus was on the earth, they asked him about heaven. But he never spoke about heaven like we read in the book of Revelation as described by John. You know, John, when he saw heaven, he said, you know, there's the throne room of God. And in front of the throne room of God, there is a sea of glass. And there's a river that flows from the throne room of God. And that's a river with living water that you drink of that water and you live forever. And then along this river, there, there, the tree, there is the tree of life. And the tree of life bears 12 manner of fruits. So, so God didn't go into describing the beauty of heaven. But what Jesus did when he talked about heaven, this is, he spoke in parables. And so Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a man that was in a field and he found a hidden treasure. And he concealed it and in joy he went and sold all that he had and bought the field. In other words, this, this hidden treasure is like heaven. When this man found this hidden treasure, he sold all that he had and bought the field. And what God is saying to you, listen, when you understand what heaven is like, you will literally sell all that you have if you have to make it to heaven. Then he gave another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man in search of fine pearls. And he found a pearl of more value than all others. And he sold everything that he had and bought the pearl. Do you understand how God is speaking to us? That, that this, when you understand what heaven is about, nothing is worth. There is nothing in this life that you could trade for heaven. No success. No wealth, no corporate, no, no major corporation to own. You know, hear what God says. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? God says there's nothing that you can trade in exchange for getting you to heaven. Now, now sometimes, hear what happens in life. A young lady is looking for someone to marry and she finds someone but that someone is not a godly person. And so she enters into a marriage and has to, to go away where she will, will lose you know, her right and lose her opportunity to, to, to pray and to, to serve God in the way that she ought to. And she will say, look, I, I want this marriage. I want to be married. But in that marriage, she will lose the opportunity to find heaven. And what, what this, this parable is saying, nothing, nothing is worth trading for heaven. In fact, if you have to live this life and you, you had nothing 
and you had to go every day struggling. It is better to live that life and to make it to heaven because heaven is forever. Look, when you think of heaven, think of eternity, the never ending time when you, when you part this life, you want to make it to heaven. So hear my comparison. Someone who is a multi-billionaire could die and enter into hell. And they will say, "Wish, oh my God, I wish I could start over again. And here is the, the poor man who had nothing to talk about, but he made it to heaven. And he did good works. He told people and helped people to get to heaven. And therefore, he would be in eternity receiving rewards and gifts of God. And so therefore, a poor man can be better off in eternity than a billionaire. I'll say that one more time. A poor man, a man in need, someone who don't have anything, can be better off in the never-ending time in eternity than billionaires who enter into the eternal burning fire. Now I'm going to tell you one more parable. Now Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a man going on a long journey. And so he called three of his servants, and, and according to their abilities, he gave them talents. He gave one five, and he gave one two, and he gave another one. And so he went on the journey, and he did not tell these men what to do with the talent. Now, the talent was a measure of money long ago. And according to commentaries of, of scholars today, they say like a talent is worth a couple thousand dollars. So it was no little bit of money in those days, right? So the one with five talents, went and invested it and made five more. And the one with two talents went and invested it and made two more. But the one with one buried it in the ground waiting for the master to come back. Now when the master came back, he called them and to give an account of what they did with the talents. And the one who got the five talents said, Lord, master, you gave me five talents, I invested it, whether in business or however, and I made five more. And the Lord said, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into my joy. And then he called the second one who got two talents, and he said, Lord, you gave me two talents, I invested it and I made two more. And he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. And then up comes the one who got one talent and said, Lord, I know you to be a mean man, sowing where you didn't reap. And so I was afraid of you. And I, 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 I hid the talent in the ground. Here's your one talent. And the Lord said, you slothful waste of time, no good servant. You think I'm a mean man? And he said, take the one talent from him and give to the one that have ten. For that's his... That's how God is. And he says, throw him out into utter darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. What does this mean? Listen, every human being has received a talent from God. No matter who you are, where you live in the world, you have a talent. Your talent may be to sing, to play an instrument, to be a teacher, to be a great doctor, to be a great engineer. Everybody or you may be someone just to love people, to give people advice. God gave us many, there are thousands of, or maybe millions of talents that people have given people. God has given some people talents to be preachers and to be teachers, to be inventors, to be scholars. God gave everybody in the world talent. Some people got one, maybe some got more than one. Remember the scriptures, according so the ability of the servant, he gives some five, two and one. So God may have given you many different talents and he never tell you what to do with your talent. So you in this life got a talent from God or talents from God and he never tells you what to do. But he's coming back. For sure, Jesus is coming back and I'm going to tell you more about that. Jesus is coming back and when he comes back, he's going to ask you, what have you done with your talent? Now, when you have really invested your talent in this world 
And what you do with your talent, if you have done things to edify the kingdom of God, if you have done things to help the work of God, whether you give part of your money to help the work of God goes around the world, whether you give your time, whether you give your talent to God, whether you pray for those who are doing God's work. Once you use your talent to do something that blesses the work of God, God will reward you. I say, enter into my eternity. But if you sadly use your talent to do things for the world, and there are many in this world that use their talent for the world, to, for the things of life, for pleasures, for excitement, for thrills, and they do nothing for the kingdom of God. What a sad day it will be when such people die and they realize they have nothing to take to heaven. Imagine someone, you know, we have people in the world who have $260 billion, very wealthy people. And imagine when those people die, they have nothing to take to God. Now remember what the scripture says. How do we live to please God? It says, every day when you wake up, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Your first requirement, the first principle of life is to seek God, to seek his way. But if all you seek is wealth and earthly goods and you have nothing to take to you into the eternal life and you end up dying and going to an eternal burning fire. Look, many people when they die, and they get into the eternal by but if I what they'll say, what am I doing here? Many people say, I was a good person. You know, I, I did this and I, I gave charity. And they'll find they end up in an eternal burning fire. So this series is to help you. Now hear me. When you get to heaven, God will say to you, What have you done to help? the kingdom. Now, one of the things that you could do is if you like this, this series that I have done, and you forward this series to everybody that you know. Imagine that you forward this production series to everybody that you know, 100 people, 200 people, and encourage them to listen to it, and they find eternal life, salvation, and they go to heaven. That would be something great that you have said, hey, I sent Dr. Parati's tube, YouTube, or uh, his videos to many that found uh, the Lord and Savior, and there'll be great rewards for you. So you don't have to be a preacher in life. You don't have to be a leader in the church to do something that will benefit you into eternity. There are many things that God will lead you and guide you to do. Now remember, God is a good God, and we, we, we call God our Heavenly Father, our loving Father. And when you fall in love with Jesus, and you realize your Heavenly Father truly loves you, He will speak to you. You know, don't just go out to work every day and, you know, work for the almighty dollar. Give some time, spend some time, you know, in prayer, in a private place, in a quiet place, and always ask God, God, what talent have you given to me? And mighty God, loving Jesus, what do you want me to do with my talent? And if you listen to God, God doesn't speak audibly, but God speaks to your heart. So you have to focus not on your brain, but you have to focus in your heart and hear what God says to you. Now this morning when I woke up, I heard God say to do this production to help the world. And I obeyed. God speaks in a soft, silent voice and you hear it in your heart. And the more you practice, the more you understand and the more you learn. Now everything in this life comes by practice. You know, if you take a musical instrument, a guitar, and you try to play, 
and you find you can't play, not that you may say something is wrong with the guitar, but nothing is wrong with the guitar. You don't have the instruction. If you go on a piano and you try to play, you can't play. Why? Because you don't have the teaching. And so I'm giving you this teaching so that you will know and understand the most important thing in this life is not the almighty dollar, but the most important thing in life is to do things that will benefit you in eternity. Hear me well. The most important thing in life is to do things that will benefit you in eternity. So your first requirement is to find Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, which I did in part one of this series. When you, when you understand God's way, you see, God made a provision for every human being to get into heaven with him. Hear me well. God loved every human being, and he made a way that every human being can find a way to get forgiveness for their sin and make it to heaven. And that way was to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Remember, Jesus came to be a sin offering. Jesus allowed men to beat him beyond recognition. Jesus allowed men to nail him alive, so he suffered. Jesus was the only human being that never sinned and the only human being that could have qualified to be a sin offering. And so when he died and he punished, he died for your sin and my sin, and you have to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And I told you the prayer that you have to say, Lord, thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for sending Jesus into the world. Jesus, thank you that you came. Thank you that you allowed men to beat you and to nail you alive. Thank you for punishing for my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness and make me your child. And the scriptures say, if you say that with your mouth, believe it in your heart, God forgive you for every single sin. Everything vanishes from the records of heaven and you look as a, a holy, righteous person. Now, the good works that you do come into play. What good have you done? You'll get rewards in eternity. If you love it, if you love the teaching, if you like, comment and share to as many people that you'll be blessed in eternity. I love you so much. God bless you and bless you and bless you. So let me say a prayer for you. Here's a prayer that you can always say. Almighty God, I thank you for loving me. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for cleansing me from all unrighteousness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, empower me with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And help me, Lord, in this life to know what you want of me and let me fulfill my destiny. Mighty God, I don't want to end this life without knowing what is my destiny. So whatever mission, Lord, whatever purpose you sent me into this world for, put it into my heart that I will understand it clearly and show me the way. Help me to achieve my divine purpose. And Lord, I thank you for doing it. And Lord, I bless you for doing it in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to tell you later on why you have to pray in the name of Jesus. So make sure and tune in for the next series. God bless you and bless you and bless you. Remember, we live for eternity and not just for this life. God bless you and bless you. Amen and amen.